everyone. If you go back in the videos about a month ago, I did a video of making wine, wine making, so that people could learn the process of making the wine. Well, today I'm going to filter and bottle that wine. And so this is the video for that now. Well, a friend of mine asked me to make a video doing the filtering and bottling of the wine that I make here. So I'm going to do that today. I'm just all set up here right now. Now I use just ordinary wine bottles, screw tops that you get from the liquor store that are full of wine. And you drink them, wash the bottles, make sure they're good and clean. Because, see, I reuse these all the time for my wine making, for bottling my wine. How I do this is I have a funnel that sits in the bottle, like so. You can see that. It's in the bottle, like so. And then I have the number six filter holder for a car making coffee. It's never been used for making coffee, and that sits on the funnel like so, and then the filter goes in. Number six coffee filters. See? Goes in like so. Just as nice as you please. Now down under here, <coughs> one jar of my fruit cocktail wine that's ready for bottling, it has stopped working, so we will pop its top. Elastic bands and cellophane keep out the flies. There we go. And we give it a. Mmm, that smells great. This is going to be beautiful. I have a cranberry wine uh, down here as well that's working. It's not quite ready yet. Probably by tomorrow it'll be finished and ready for bottling. And then I'm going to start a new batch. I'm going to do a peach wine. I'm going to do a marijuana wine. And that'll be for tomorrow. So here we go. We're going to start the pour. I have a towel here on the counter. So that when I start pouring, then the bottle sits or the jar sits over here on the towel in case any spills along the edges. It doesn't go all over the place and smell up the house. Okay, so it's a gentle pour. Like so. <clears throat> and as you see, Now we'll have a bit of sediment that gets in there after the bottling is done, but as it sits in the fridge overnight, that sediment will all settle to the bottom and the wine will be nice, crisp and clear and beautiful. This is the final process of making my wine. I never let the filter run totally dry. because it'll stop the flow into the bottle. And this, this process doesn't take very long at all. It's actually quite simple and easy. It's at the end, it can slow down. At the end, it can slow down because of the sediments in the bottom of the jar here will start to clog the filter and then it takes a while. And that's usually when I sit down and have dinner and watch a movie. <coughs> this bottle 
was almost half full. Usually I can get this to sit upright. Why it doesn't want to today, I have no idea. <coughs> smells good. This could be a nice fine wine. Now I've heard some other guys say that they've eaten the fruit after the winemaking process and they get pretty drunk off of it, but I never eat the fruit after. I don't know why, I just don't. Usually the fruit cocktail wine turns out really good even though it's got pineapple in it, but the pineapple gives it a nice flavor, nice texture. I like my wines. I like to make my own wines. So there you have it. I'll show you what the wine looks like after it's fully bottled. Back in a minute. There we go. Two bottles of wine. And as I said, that cloudiness is uh, the It'll clear up in the morning as it sits in the fridge. That's just sediment that gets through in the filtering. And all that will drop in by morning or by tomorrow afternoon. And then uh, it'll be nice and clear and good to drink. So, yeah. Tomorrow I'm going to start some new wines. I'm going to start a batch of marijuana wine. I'm going to start a batch of peach wine. And I... Um, I'm going to start some honey wine, some mead. I'm going to make some of that tomorrow as well. I'm going to start it brewing tomorrow. So tomorrow's a new batch. We'll do a new video tomorrow to show how we're doing with making the wines. All right, everybody. Thank you and have a good day.